Hey everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Monday Minute. This is probably gonna be uh, a bit longer than a minute. I'm gonna teach you how to sequence really fast. I'm gonna teach you how to sequence with a very simple song and a few different effects that I like. And um, if you get really good at this, you'll never have to buy sequences again. Let's start. Just got a basic intro. Even, even beats. Goes in the verse, repeats, keeps the verse, goes in the chorus. Very, very pretty stuff. Fades out, back to the verse. <clears throat> okay, back to the verse and final chorus. and then fades at the end. Really, really basic. And I've set up timing, some basic timings that the system already provides for us. The new timing I use just to separate where the verse and choruses are and any fades or any punches that I may want to put in there. Uh, and then I have beats and that's it. It's pretty simple stuff. So if you wanted to go with whole house effects, go for it, but you're not gonna learn a lot about sequencing by putting on whole house effects. Don't don't start with that. I've done other videos that are similar to this about isolating specific model groups and we're going to do something similar here as well and we're going to start with the eaves. And as you can see here, I've subdivided all these verses. So why don't we just go with the single strand effect and put this right here. Oh, we're going to try to put it right there. There we go. And we're going to just put this every four so we're gonna have this just go one way and then we'll go back. Uh, I like to put on a fade effect. I just love the way this looks live. It just fades it back enough. It's really pretty. If you want to put more on, you certainly could. And so I'm just, that's, that's the effect I want right there. And that looks pretty good to me. Because all of my eaves are in eaves groups, it's probably a good idea to consider putting this to go across each one equally. And the easy way to do that, since these are in a group, if you double click here, we'll see that there's my Eve upper and Eve lowers and I'll suitcase that right back up, is I come over to my layer settings. So get used to doing this at the group level. You select your effect and then you go over to your layer settings and you click on overlay centered it is one way, or you can put it on overlay scaled. What overlay scaled does is make sure that no matter how long the run is, it, when it starts on the left, it finishes on the right on each run equally. Okay, so let's make this a little bit longer here. That looks good. And let's watch. Okay, I like that. And because it's going to break up a little bit, why don't we just copy this section and paste it. We just paste it right here. Well, hold on. Maybe, maybe first I should copy it. Copy it. Right click. Paste it. Why is it not pasting? Oh, it was hit. Because this front line here, I bet goes beyond the bar because I'm starting it at the very beginning. So here we go. That looks good. But what I want to do here is just make it go opposite. Simple, right? And then I can paste here again and make sure this is gonna go the same way. That one goes back, copy this, paste this. You might have to line these up. There we go, I'll line that up. And then if you want, you can copy and paste both of these. Copy that, paste these. Make sure they're lined up. Looks good, so this is, this is the song, just the eaves. Easy, easy. Now you notice you hear a little crash here. So something that you can do that's kind of fun, even with the same props, it's just put a cool little effect on there to sort of uh, emphasize that crash symbol. And one of the ones I like a lot is the shockwave. 
and you can have the duration last as long as you like and go with a different color. I mean, maybe just go with a white to blue and we'll put this again at the overlay center or overlay scaled and then you want to adjust the radius. So the radius one is the beginning part of it. So let's make this a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna have to scoot this up just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing down here at the bottom. There we go. Then we can see that the width too. So you wanna bring that out, okay? And maybe we'll just make this green blue. There we go. So now, and maybe the crash. There's the crash. There we go. Look at this. Okay, so we'll watch this and we'll just play it from right about here. Nice, nice subtle green to blue. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. The other thing you can do, and I highly recommend this, is and, and with transitions, it's probably a good idea if you give it a little bit of a fade out, it'll look so much better if you do. So if we just take this shockwave and we do a fade out of 0.5, it makes it look so much better. It's a nice fade out. All right, anyway. So now we get to the next section. It's a chorus. So why don't we break this up a little bit? Why don't we just uh, put a an effect like spirals for the whole thing, even to the end of the fade. And then we can speed this up, set this to overlay scaled or overlay center, put a nice 3D effect on there. That's pretty. Now, you can leave that alone. Let's put a, an out transition of one on here. And maybe we need to put this where it's at here. And I would go with the more extreme out trend. Oh, Ron, what did you just say? Don't do that. Uh, I would go with something a little more uh, pronounced and fades out slowly. Great. So that's pretty simple. So we have a verse section done, we have a chorus, we could repeat everything with the verse again. We could just copy this, I'm gonna copy all of that, and then I'm gonna paste this right here. Now watch what happens. That's pretty close, that's pretty close. We'll tighten these up just a little bit. Tighten that one up, tighten that one up. Is there a crash right here? No. There is a little crash right here, so why don't we go ahead and put that there. Make it nice and subtle. And then we're back into the chorus here. So we're gonna get rid of these. We're gonna grab this guy. We're gonna put you back in here. There we go. And we're gonna let this continue to the end. And then I think we'll just do a really long fade out. We'll go with six. Okay, so that's, that's a foundation right there that can be applied to a lot of things. So why don't we do this now before we totally mess this up? Let's, yeah, I'll just give it that name, that's fine. Okay, We'd, I would hate for x to crash with all that work we just did in just a few minutes. And so we have the beginning parts of a sequence that we can work with. Now, if you wanna get more creative on something with the, the chorus, with these spirals, we could certainly do something different with the movement or the spiral wraps, maybe thickness, not so much thickness, not on, on something like this, because these aren't thick, it's just one single straight line, right? But what about the movement? Some food for thought here is I have this selected, go to the movement, click on this value curve here, and let's take a look at something that's already built into x Lights. it's pretty cool, is we have a timing track toggle, we have timing track uh, fixed, uh, proportional, uh, we can do it based on the music. And so let's see what the music does to the timing movements.
See, that's interesting. So it's taking what X lights hears from the music and applying some movement with the value curves. We could look at another one here. Uh, I don't know if I would choose all of these or, well, let's just look at beats and beats may not be a good example, but I want you to see what it does. I mean, you could make that work. It's not my cup of tea, but still. Anyway, I'm gonna take this, turn this off. These are things that you just need to experiment with rhythm-wise for your sequence. Uh, don't forget, it never hurts to add a little sparkle based on the music. Here we go, let's look at this. Oh, I do like that. And since the other one's the same, what I'm gonna do here is just drag this from the left right on top of it so it makes it identical to it. Yeah, I like that, I really like that. Okay, so here we go. This looks good to me. What about the verts? Can we do the same thing with the verts? Absolutely, we could just take and highlight over this. Now it is important, leave your timings on. If I copy all of this, then I paste this in here. Let's see what this does. Solid. Puts everything there. I am going to caution you, depending on the effects you choose, you may need to change your verts group or candy canes group from overlay scaled or centered to vertical per model per strand. So just keep an eye on that. Some effects don't play well with overlay centered or scaled. So this looks fine. That looks good. Let's get to our chorus. I think that's subtle, smooth, it's pretty. And it becomes the framework of your sequence. So while I still have this copied to the clipboard for the computer, there's no reason why I can't go ahead and apply it to other things and see if I like it. You can always omit things. So here's my windows. Windows are looking good. I like it. Uh, let's do this. Flake arms. Doesn't matter if you have Boscoyo or Gilbert Engineering flakes. If they have submodels, and they all should, you can make some really nice movements with this. Look at that. We have continuity, everything is super smooth. Not bad. And then you can finesse things. If, if this looks too choppy, we can certainly have an impact on that by changing the chase size. Maybe you want that chase size to be a bit more, so we could highlight all of these, right click on the chase size, go from 44, let's just take this way up here and let's watch what this looks like now. A little bit of a longer chase, I like the tail of it. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what you can do with that. Uh, did we look at, this looks really pretty here in the chorus. There we go. Yeah, that's really, really pretty. And really simple to do. So simple to do, believe it or not, it's really, really simple to do. And it looks like maybe I lost uh, my window. There we go, there's the whole house, we're back. Okay, uh, you can also take different sections of this and you could copy this to maybe the spokes group. And so now we have it looking even different. And just making little ch subtle changes like this makes for quick, quick work. 
So you think that's all? No, no, there's so much more. Let's take this entire section. Let's talk about HD. Let's talk about the, the mystery behind HD models. They're all submodel groups. They all have different uh, characteristics, but they're all groups. So if we take the XLS and we, post, we paste this here, and then let's just also take the uh, arms and uh, let's just do this here. So on this, I have the burst just on this section here. Let's get you in there. There we go. And this looks like this. And that's really slow, right? So you could change all of these and make them a little bit faster because the prop's bigger. Maybe now we go over here and do a bulk edit and do a bounce from left to right or alter each of these. Sky's the limit. And I don't think that grabbed those. Let's do, let's grab these one more time. Right click, left to right. I think it did. Yeah, we did. Okay. Uh, maybe you wanna put in two instead of one. Uh, there we go. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I th see, now that's, that's looking very different. Very, very cool. How about uh, spirals? Spirals looks amazing. Look at that. Let's look at the whole house. Folks, you do not have to be a rocket scientist or musician to do some of the basics in X-Lights to create a really cool sequence. Does it take time? Yes. Do I have a whole lot of experience doing this? Yes. Do I take it to different levels uh, using layer settings and layer blendings and color palettes and custom timings? Absolutely. You don't have to. If your show is on a budget, or you just have a passion and really want to learn to sequence, there's nothing stopping you, but you have to practice. And my suggestion is to find the shortest songs you can that have an intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, vamp, outro, and practice with the basics. Start with basic effects. Learn how to use the timings to benefit your learning experience with sequencing. Everybody that wants to learn to sequence can. You just have to put in a little effort and practice. And now is the time to start practicing if you want to have a sequence for your own show that you do. I encourage anybody who's curious about sequencing to go do it. It is such a blast. I love it. Absolutely love it. And you can get great at it you just need to put in the hours. All right. I know it's been long-winded. I hope this has been valuable. Please smash that thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel so that you get notifications on uh, any time I release trainings. This is a Monday Minute training, so uh, it happens every Monday as much as I can. I've only missed one. Again, thanks for your time. Happy sequencing. And this has been Monday Minute. See ya.